Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Nice. All right, I want to learn about the early Spanish and Portuguese empires. This wasn't a recommendation, just one of those that I saw, wanted to watch. Might as well react to it. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. My name's Connor. Nice to meet you. Uh, if, you <laughs> if you want to learn about history, react to history videos, recommend them in the comments so I can watch them. Love for you to join us. Pull up a chair. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Original video at the top description below. History Matters, you know I've reacted to like 50 of their videos. They're amazing. Let's do it. Very eager to learn Ceuta, this. which is here, had just fallen to the Portuguese. This conquest was led by King John I of... Gotta make sure everything's going right. Okay. ...of Portugal, who was seeking loot and to control the Straits of Gibraltar, the northern side being dominated by the Kingdom of Castile. This strait controlled trade flowing in and out of the Mediterranean, which was important because Portugal, as you can see, was not in the Mediterranean and wanted to be guaranteed access to its trade routes. A bit of background, the Iberian Peninsula at this time was divided into five different entities. On the Atlantic coast was Portugal, in the middle of the peninsula was Castile, to the north was Navarre, to the south the Islamic Emirate of Granada, and on the Mediterranean coast oh, was the Kingdom of Aragon. The two kingdoms responsible for most of the exploring in the period were Castile, which was very wealthy, and Portugal, which had a strong naval tradition. Expansion around this time was intermittent and was often due to the patronage of wealthy individuals, often monarchs. In the case of Portugal, much was due to Henry the Navigator, whose sponsorship allowed Portugal to claim and settle Madeira and the Azores. His patronage also funded Portuguese exploration of Africa, and by 1445 most of the northwestern coast of Africa had been explored. The Portuguese had a monopoly on the trade from this region, and to protect it they built coastal and island forts from which they operated. These were called Fitorias and essentially acted as trading ports, warehouses and military garrisons and gave Portugal huge influence in the surrounding areas. The trade from West Africa was mostly meagre until 1471 when the Portuguese sailed down to what is now modern day Ghana. Here they found a trading network rich in gold, ivory and slaves. This made many Portuguese traders very rich and at first they tried to keep this trade a secret, which of course didn't happen because wealth has a tendency of getting noticed, in this case by the Castilians. Wealth was one of the main reasons. <laughs> oh God. I will never fail to laugh at just the simple because wealth has a tendency of getting noticed. In this case, by the Castilian drawings wealth was of this one of the main reasons Great. for exploration, and would soon become an important tax revenue for many European kingdoms. There were other reasons, however. Religion played a huge part in pushing exploration. Many Christians felt compelled to convert the natives of faraway lands. Christians were also searching for Prester John, a mythical Christian king from either Africa or Asia who they wanted to ask for help in a crusade. Castile had done some of its own exploring and colonizing by this point and yeah. had been slowly conquering the Canary Islands. Castilian ships were also following the Portuguese down the coast of Africa and trading as well. During the War of the Castilian Succession, which saw Isabella proclaimed the Queen of Castile, the Portuguese and Castilian fleets often fought off the coast of Africa. Isabella was married to Ferdinand, the King of Aragon, and together they conquered the Emirate of Granada in 1492, uniting most of the peninsula and forming the basis of Spain. For the sake of simplicity, both Castile and Aragon will be referred to as Spanish, but they were technically distinct kingdoms. Mm -hmm. So okay. Portuguese and Spanish exploration really kicked mm -hmm. off towards the end of the 15th century due to the new technology of triangular sails. These sails allowed ships to sail into the wind and further than ever before, which precipitated a major... Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, I would love to go into more of just ha the history of, of shipmaking. If you guys have any video, you guys didn't pretty much ignore that question I had like 50 videos ago, unless I missed an answer but like if you have it if you have any videos or even books webs whatever about just the history maybe i'll just wikipedia it the history of shipbuilding especially warships be very interesting guys an explorative voyage ships Sorry, the end of the 15th century due to the new technology of triangular sails see, these see. sails allowed ships to sail into the wind and further than ever before which precipitated a major rise in explorative voyages which were mostly dominated by sailors from venice genoa portugal and castile the Portuguese moved further and further down the coast of Africa until Bartolomeu Diaz sailed around the southern tip of Africa in 1488, opening up the Indian Ocean to exploration. The most famous voyage of the era occurred in 1492 when Christopher Columbus, a Genoan, sailed under the patronage of Castile and Aragon and discovered the New World, landing in the Bahamas, although he believed he had landed in Asia. Yeah, didn't he not really ever set foot on what is now the US, but he discovered... Vasco right, da Gama, right. who in 1498 sailed all the way around Africa and landed in India. After him was Amerigo Vespucci, who sailed to Brazil and demonstrated that the New World was in fact not Asia. America's name would later form the basis of America, the name for this new continent. America. In 1500, Pedro Cabral discovered Brazil before traveling to India as well. This new Let's get rid of the A. 
Replace the E with a U. Continent. Put in a little posture. In 1500, Pedro Cabral discovered Brazil before traveling to India as well. Columbus's attempt to find a route to Asia and Gama's search for a route to India were due to the desire to circumvent the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans had expanded quickly during the 15th century and in 1453 had put an end to the business. The Ottomans. The Ottomans and the neighbor, neighboring Mamluks had a monopoly on the overland trade route with China and India. Being the middleman between Europe and Asia made the Ottomans exceptionally wealthy. And said it expanded it. quickly during the 15th century and in 1453 had put an end to the Byzantine Empire when they conquered Constantinople. Many Europeans weren't keen on trading with an Islamic power which profited from them. As such, many Europeans looked for ways around the Ottomans to save money and avoid having to trade with Muslims. So Portugal and Spain, having invested so much in exploring, wanted returns for their efforts and so approached the greatest moral authority of the time, the Pope, for guarantees. Various popes gave guarantees, but eventually the Portuguese and Castilian monarchs made their own agreement. This agreement, the Treaty of Tordesillas, divided the world between Spain and Portugal. This agreement was quickly ignored by other European That's powers, fair. but it did help direct both Castile and Portugal. Both wanted power and wealth, but the ways they built their empires were fundamentally different. The Spanish built what could be said is a more traditional territorial empire. There are a lot of individual conquests, but the two best known were those by the conquistadors Hernán Cortés, who conquered the Aztec Empire, and Francisco Pizarro, who conquered the Incas. So, Cortés landed in what is now Mexico in 1519, having been ordered by the governor of Cuba to not do exactly that. The Aztec Empire that dominated Mexico was not some grand unified state. It was comprised of subject states which paid tribute, often in the form of humans for sacrifice to the Aztecs and their ruler, who was called the Tlatoani. His name was Moctezuma II and lived in the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, which had a... Um, I've heard this, I forget who. It might be Neil deGrasse Tyson or something, but how... The, I should have probably said this a little bit earlier in the video, but it just came to me now, and it's a pretty cool uh, argument, but he says how the the single most amazing, or I forget the ad, what I forget he, what he, uh, the words he used exactly, but the most amazing, astounding, Im important, something like that moment in, in human history was when Columbus or one of the other guys first encountered Native Americans, um, because that was the first time in in like fifteen thousand years that this branch of humans that went off into uh, North America and then down and populated. There's some theory too that, especially because like um, Easter Island is it's in the middle of nowhere, but it's really far, uh, you know, out there, closer to South America than other uh, south south. East Pacific uh, Islands, but so maybe they went over there, but just after 15,000 years These people finally had like uh, interaction. I s explained that horribly, but I hope I got my point Population of roughly a maybe quarter million people after making contact with the Aztecs Cortes made his way through the Aztec tributary states such as the semi-independent Tlaxcalans who saw the Spanish arrival as an opportunity to overthrow their Aztec overlords after making alliances and a little bit of fighting, Cortes took a small force of his men to Tenochtitlan where he was greeted by Moctezuma, who soon found himself essentially a Spanish puppet. Whilst Cortes was in Tenochtitlan, a man called Panfilo de Narvaez arrived on the coast of Mexico to arrest him for defying the Cuban governor. Cortes left the Aztec capital and gave Narvaez's men a reason to join him. That reason was gold. Cortes returned to Tenochtitlan, which was in revolt Blast. against him, and during the fighting, Moctezuma was killed along with roughly 800 conquistadors. Cortes fled to Tlaxcala, where they were reinforced and planned a counterattack. At this point, the Aztec grip on their empire was severely diminished, and with the help of many former Aztec subjects, the Spanish laid siege to Tenochtitlan, which had recently had an outbreak of smallpox. The combined Spanish native force won decisively, and the Aztec Empire was annexed. Over the next decades, more Spanish conquistadors arrived, rebelling peoples were subjugated, and Central America began- Imagine how horrific it must have been over just a few generations. Maybe, I'm not sure how long it took to re for smallpox to really almost wipe out Native Americans. Um, imagine that generation or two or three where you just see everyone around you die, and then you eventually probably- dying from it, just of this sickness that you hadn't seen before. That must have been so terrifying. Came the vice royalty of New Spain. A decade after Cortes's victory, Pizarro and a group of conquistadors landed here in what was then the Incan Empire. The Incas were at the time undergoing a civil war over the succession of the throne which was won by a certain Atahualpa. Pizarro invited Atahualpa to meet him and 150 of his men at a place I thought it was Atahualpa. called Cayamarca, which Atahualpa agreed to. 
When he arrived, Pizarro sprung his trap, capturing the Incan leader and holding him for ransom before executing him the year after. This ransom. I'm not laughing at the execution. I'm laughing at the drawing. Trap here. capturing the. <laughs> this guy just waiting over here. The Incan leader and holding him for ransom before that. executing him the year after. This ransom was huge. Capturing the Incan leader and holding him for ransom before executing. Is that Pizarro? No. Executing him the year after. This ransom was huge, so huge it took two years to deliver. This made the conquistadors exceptionally rich and thus the Incan Empire very poor. The Incan Empire never recovered from this and over the next few decades it disintegrated and was incorporated into the Spanish Empire as part of the vice royalty of Peru. It was from South America that Spain got famously wealthy from the silver mines there which they extracted via the use of native labour. Expansion of empire did not mean the end of exploration, and in 1519, Ferdinand Magellan began the first successful circumnavigation of the globe. He didn't see the end of the voyage, though, since he decided to stop off at the Philippines in order to oh, be yeah, murdered. Oh, yeah, he, uh... Portugal's approach was markedly... I didn't say Magellan in order to be the murdered. ...the first successful circumnavigation of the globe. He didn't see the end of the voyage, though, since he decided to stop off at the Philippines in order to be murdered. Portugal's approach was markedly different from Spain's. After Vasco da Gama's initial journey, the Portuguese made almost yearly voyages into the Indian Ocean with fleets, called armadas, to conduct trade missions. In fact, Cabral was leading one of these armadas when Brazil was discovered in 1500. The Portuguese did settle Brazil shortly afterwards, which was an important source of lumber, but since there was no gold there, the Portuguese focused on the land surrounding the Indian Ocean instead. One aspect no of gold. Portuguese power that differed from Spain was that it was overwhelmingly focused on the navy. This meant that pushing deep inland like the Spanish did was unfeasible. Instead, Didn't Portugal realize. established what has been called a trading post empire, whereby many fighterias were created along the coasts of the Indian Ocean, and from them the mighty Portuguese navy operated. Portugal's navy was important in shaping... I want to know what the rooms are where... Indian Ocean trade when the cartage system was established. Under this system, sailors and traders would pay Portugal for a license, and in return, Portugal would keep them safe from hostile states and pirates. Failure to pay the cartage would lead to either ships being refused passage, having their goods seized, or being attacked. The cartage, alongside the strength of the Portuguese navy, gave Portugal dominance over Indian Ocean trade. This upset the Ottomans, who tried to remove the Portuguese, but ultimately failed. In 1510, under the command of a man called Afonso de Albuquerque, the Portuguese captured Goa, which became Mexico. a strategically important outpost. The next year, he conquered Malacca, giving Portugal control over the Straits of Malacca, an important choke point in the lucrative spice trading network. In 1542, the Portuguese established contact and trade with the Japanese, and in 1557, Portugal was leased Macau in China, from which they traded. It wasn't just Portugal in Southeast Asia, since in 1564, Spain also conquered the Philippines. Brazil was not entirely ignored during not this until we took it. time either. French explorers started smuggling Brazil with back to Europe or and even settled on the coast it. there. This forced the Portuguese to begin formal colonization and to make sure the French stuck up shut up. ignored during this time either. French explorers started smuggling Brazil with back to Europe and even settled on the coast there. This forced the Portuguese to begin formal colonization and to make sure the French stuck coming back. They simply paid them. Brazil would later become extremely important to the Portuguese economy as a massive importer of slaves from Africa. These empires brought huge amounts of yeah. wealth back to both Spain and Portugal, tipping the European balance for Brazil. Um, would later something I, I could be so wrong. Uh, I think something like 80% of all slaves from Africa during the slave trade went to Brazil alone. To become extremely important to the Portuguese economy as a massive importer of slaves from Africa. These empires brought huge amounts there. of wealth back to both Spain and Portugal, tipping the European balance of power. Spain, under Carlos I and Philippe II, became Europe's most powerful country. This was primarily because of the masses of silver that were imported from the New World back to Europe, as well as the money made in trade with Africa. Wealthy kingdoms tend to make enemies, and Spain and Portugal were no different. The Spanish soon found stuff. themselves at odds with the French, the English, the Portuguese, and later the Dutch. These costly wars, alongside the declining value of silver... Poor Italy, after the Roman Empire, it just seems like every video I watch or I see a map of Europe with some borders after the Roman Empire, it just seems like Italy is always just a jumble of, like, the Holy Roman Empire map. English, the Portuguese, and Spain and Portugal were no different. The Spanish soon found themselves at odds with the French, the English, the Portuguese, up. and later the Dutch. 
These costly wars, alongside the declining value of silver, meant that Spain gradually became poorer, but ultimately would remain the most powerful European nation for several more decades. What was replacing the silver for money? was slightly better at avoiding European wars, and its power didn't wane. I mean, I'm not saying I know how, what decreases the value of silver. Of silver meant that Spain gradually became poorer, but ultimately would remain the most powerful European nation for several more decades. The Portuguese were slightly better at avoiding European wars, and its power didn't wane until the Iberian Union, which occurred when King Sebastian died. This led to a conflict which Philippe of Spain won, making him the King of Portugal as well. This made Spain's enemies Portugal's, and thus other European powers began to grab some of Portugal's colonies. In conclusion, the Portuguese and Spanish were the first out of the gates when it came to empire building. Their empires are ultimately complex and should not be seen as merely good or uniformly evil. Whilst conquest and destruction... I'd like to see how they... a video about how they... Uh, conquered the Netherlands. The complex and should not be seen as merely good or uniformly evil. Whilst conquest and destruction did occur widely, they also Neither. opened world trade to Europeans, which for better or worse made the world we live in today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching. Thank you for making. Great video, as always. Um, ooh, that might be a good one. Ooh, the J Japan 10 minutes. Yeah, um... I think I'm. Uh, this will be it for me today. I'll, I'll good health put out a few more sleep. tomorrow. See you guys. Hope you're doing good. See ya.